What's going on guys? This is The Centrepreneur here today with a new video. Today I wanted to bring to you my top 10 niche fragrances for fall 2017. Before we jump into this list, I would like to mention a couple things. First off, if you haven't checked out my designer list, please do so. Uh, there'll be a card up top. That'll give you an idea of the designers I'm checking out. Uh, much more affordable than these, unfortunately. Um, also, if you haven't checked out my fall rotation, I recommend that as well. A lot of those fragrances are going to be in this list, so that's another one to check out, guys. These are not the 10 best fall niche of all time. These are what I would consider the 10 best niche fragrances for the fall that I've smelled to this point that are very good. Some of these are sexy. A lot of these are very elegant. Great picks, all of them, guys. Anyway, just wanted to mention my list, not the all-time list. So quickly before we hop into this list, I do have two honorable mentions. Didn't quite make the didn't quite make the cut. We've got one from Creed, we've got one from Parfums de Marley, two of my favorite, favorite niche houses. We've got first from Creed, Aventus. Uh, Aventus didn't make my list simply because I wear it year-round. I don't really get uh, jazzed up any particular season to wear it. Just it's it's always in my rotation. As you've seen, it's good. I like wearing it, but I didn't feel like putting it in this list just because it's an all-year fragrance for me. Also, the fragrance from Parfums de Marley at honorable mention is Herod. Herod's amazing. It's the best tobacco and vanilla blend, in my opinion, by far. Um, the reason it just makes it at honorable mention here is because, frankly, I find it so much better in the cold. Whenever I wear it and it's not super cold out, it almost feels like a cop-out and uh, I don't really enjoy it. So I'm probably gonna break this out once or twice, but it's not gonna be an everyday thing. I'm saving Herod for the winter. So these two are my honorable mentions, guys. Right, guys, let's kick this list off with what's probably the cheapest fragrance on this list. Uh, just because it's at number 10 doesn't mean it doesn't have any quality or anything. It's just up against some stiff competition. Uh, it's very delicious. It is from, without further ado, it is from Shane Blue, and at number 10, it's Salt Caramel. So, Shane Blue Salt Caramel, the name is what it is. It is a salty, delicious caramel. It's very warming, very sweet. Uh, it's not too feminine, though. A guy can easily pull this one off. Great, great, affordable niche gourmand, guys. Salt Caramel, amazing at number 10. At number nine, we've got another really delicious fragrance here, guys. This is another one from Parfums de Marly, and it's Ojean at number nine. Ojean smells like a warm cinnamon apple pie with honey. Um, very, very delicious, like I said. Very similar to Hermes Ombre Narguile, but just deeper, better, more mature, more sophisticated, better performance, less price tag. All around, much better than Ombre Nargule, in my opinion. No knock against Ombre Nargule, because it's great. This is just better. <laughs> Ojean, at number nine, from Parfums de Marley, guys. Right, number eight didn't record, apparently, so uh, round two. <laughs> uh, luckily for me, and for you guys, this one is really, really good. At number eight, from By Killian, this is Single Malt. So, Single Malt, to me, I've mentioned it a few times, this is... This is a 10 out of 10. This stuff is so absolutely gorgeous. What you're gonna get out of Killian Single Malt is, um, really helps to picture it as we go here, but uh, picture a plum with, uh, with a light powdery vanilla, just drenched, soaked, oozing booze, oozing malt liquor. That is by Killian Single Malt. It's absolutely gorgeous and, um, the proof is in the pudding, man. I usually hate whiskey and fragrances. I usually hate plum and fragrances. But uh, it must be the double negative because when you put it all together, it makes a perfect 10 out of 10. The only reason I didn't place this one higher is because I do think it would be better for the colder weather. But uh, man, I'm still gonna wear this probably like crazy, especially once it gets colder in the fall this year. By Killian Single Malt at number eight. Try it if you haven't, man. It's so good. At number seven, guys, we've got one that would probably be ranked higher in the warm weather <laughs> as opposed to Single Malt, which would be better in the cold. Um, 
This is one that I just recently picked up. I'm still super excited to keep wearing this. I've been wearing it. It's really good. It is from Gallagher Fragrances and it's that guy. So you may have seen my unboxing for this one. I love it. Um, my favorite Gallagher fragrance by far. It is, um, it's very much a designer type feel to it. It's probably the lightest fragrance on this list. Uh, you've got notes, uh, very fruity notes actually, like a black currant, juniper berries, little bit of pineapple, not too much. And you've got woody notes making this just, <sighs> making this very good, yet very mass appealing at the same time. It's a compliment getter. It's a sexy fragrance. Uh, I'm very excited to keep wearing this stuff, guys. Gallagher Fragrances, that guy for the fall at number seven. At number six, guys, we've got another from By Killian. Very, very good fragrance. The runner up to my formal scent for my rotation for this fall. It is from their, uh, their Oud collection. It is Amber Oud. So Amber Oud is a, uh, it's an ambery kind of balsamic vanilla. It's very buttery. I get a, I get a big, big buttery vibe out of this one. It's very elegant and uh, sophisticated. For me, this is very much a formal fragrance. I can't really seeing this dressed down too much, but that's good because it's really expensive. Uh, guys, from By Killian at number six, Amber Oud. At number five, guys, we've got the last one from Parfums de Marly on this list. It's uh, the one that I don't have a bottle of. Uh, I've been running through samples though. It is Leighton at number five. Leighton is another one that kind of has a designer fragrancy type feel to it. It's uh, apple and vanilla and spices, kind of similar to CH Men Privé by Carolina Herrera. It's, it's very good, very easy to wear. I'm torn on if I want a bottle or not. I'm also cheap, so <laughs> I'm gonna use this up first. But amazing fall fragrance, guys. Compliment getter, like I said, very easy to wear, very easy to like and it's Perfumes de Marly Leighton at number five, guys. At number four, guys, we've got my favorite fragrance of all time. From the House of Matriarch, it is Coco Blanc. Right, so Coco Blanc, it is sticky, delicious, gooey, white chocolate and vanilla. <sighs> it's so good. And uh, sandalwood and a little bit of spice make it wearable for a guy or girl. It's very much unisex, but Coco Blanc doesn't make it higher on this list just because it's not one of those that I'm excited to wear every day. It's very, very situational, very much a good guy fragrance for me. And um, for those reasons, I'm just going to keep this at number four. Amazing stuff, though. My favorite matriarch, my favorite fragrance in general of all time, guys. Coco Blanc at number four. All right, guys, at uh, number three, this is, this is some good juice. You know, we're not even at the fall yet, but I've already broken into this stuff. I, I couldn't help myself. Uh, the day fit, I wanted to, and it happened. <laughs> if you follow me on Snapchat, you may have guessed what it is already. Uh, it's my favorite Nasamato fragrance, guys. Pardon. At number three, so, <laughs> like I said, I've already been into this stuff. It's so good. Nasamato Pardon is like a, a very dark, rich chocolatey fudge fragrance with cinnamon and patchouli that make it very masculine um, kind of a rugged chocolate but not the most rugged fragrance um not definitely not the most rugged nasamato fragrance either but uh it's the most rugged chocolate i've ever smelled if that makes sense this is the most manly chocolate uh, very sophisticated very dark sexy it's not as evil or brooding smelling as the other Nasamatos are. This is, oh, it's so good. Dark, mysterious, sexy. Pardon, guys, for Nasamato at number three. <laughs> number two, guys, right on. These top two are so good. Uh, I'll say that right now. This is another one that I've actually been dipping into just to close off the summer. Amazing, amazing fragrance. Oh, I just caught a whiff of it as I took the cap off my, uh, my decant. It's so good. The counterpart to my number one designer fragrance, guys. This is one from Serjoff and it's Naxos. So, like I said, this is this is the niche counterpart to Thierry Mugler's Pure Havan. And uh, I'll say right now, Naxos is the better scent, but it's also much more expensive. 
it's probably a buy for me, honestly. It's so good. It's so amazing. So if you haven't smelled Pure Havana and you're curious what Naxos is, it is like a honey and cherry, vanilla, tobacco, a little tonka bean, a little bit of flowers too that make it um, somewhat fresh and wearable in the summer as I found out the other day. <laughs> but um, it's so amazing. Not the best performer, but especially outside. If you've seen my rotation, you know I love this outside, by the way. But uh, outside, this and Pure Havan have been really carrying and they just smell so good out in the uh, the outside clean air that uh, the Naxos had to make it super high on this list, just like Pure Havan did for the designers. Uh, very sophisticated, very sexy, but at the same time versatile. Surge off Naxos at number two, guys. Number one niche fall fragrance, guys. You know it's got to be good. I've already been through some heavy hitters. Uh, you've heard me talk about this one before. I personally think it deserves so much more attention than it gets. It is from Penn Halligans, you know what it is, Roaring Radcliffe at number one, guys. So just quickly, before I take a whiff of this and uh, lose my breath for a second, guys, I compare this to uh, a mixture of 40% uh, Martin Margiela Jazz Club and 60% uh, Tom Ford Tobacco Vanille. It, for me, it takes the best parts from both and blends them together to make the ultimate gentleman's club fragrance. This is very much uh, one of those gentleman's club fragrances like uh, Tobacco Vanille and Jazz Club try to do. This just does better for, for me anyway. Uh, takes the best parts of both of them, puts it together, and you get rum, tobacco, honey, and gingerbread. It's, <laughs> it's so good. Uh, great performance. Such a great, great, great player fragrance, guys. So if you're one of those single guys running around, hitting the town, and uh, you want to feel classy, you want to kill it, I recommend trying Roaring Radcliffe by Penn Halligans at number one. Right on, guys. That's been my top 10 fall niche fragrances for 2017 with two honorable mentions. Let me know down in the comments, what does your list look like for uh, fall niche for this year? What did you think of my list? Also, let me know uh, what you think of some of these fragrances. Are any of these your favorites? Uh, they're, a lot of these are mine. And uh, yeah, they're all pretty much 9 out of 10 plus for me. These are, oof. it's an exciting time of the year to be wearing fragrances, guys. This has been The Centrepreneur. If you enjoyed this video and haven't done so already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. That would be amazing. And there's new content coming out all the time. I've got fragrance reviews, top lists like this, my rotation seasonally, uh, unboxing, first impressions, haul videos, the works. Also, if you had fun watching this video, please toss me a big thumbs up down below. That would be amazing. Guys, also, if you feel like seeing more of me, don't forget to add me on Snapchat. My name is in the description. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you're as excited about fall as I am. These guys help a lot. <laughs> uh, also, guys, just uh, have an awesome day, and I hope to see you in the next video.